welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutler. That is me. I'm both of us. I'm no one. <laughs> <laughs> This week we'll be talking about slippery screwdrivers and the demon core. <laughs> slippery scru- I already know the title of this episode. <laughs> slippery screwdrivers. Slippery screwdrivers. And the okay. demon core. The demon core. The I didn't even listen to that bit. I just <laughs> lost it as slippery screwdrivers. For once, I have literally no insight as to where that is going. I am so glad. Because okay. I found out about this just the other day, and I had I had this complete other episode planned, and I was like, I scrapped it just for this. Wow. Yeah. So. Today is a double bill detailing the dangers of radiation and using science to pursue war instead of knowledge. In the 40s, a third nuclear bomb claimed the lives of a small group of men without ever being dropped. What? Wait. Yeah. Did it just like radiate all over them or did it explode? It didn't explode. Well, it kind of exploded just a little bit. How can you kind of explode a nuclear bomb? <laughs> a little, a little it either undergoes nuclear fission or it doesn't undergo nuclear fission. That's that's the choice. That's not necessarily true. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, I guess we'll find out. So, well, <laughs> Please start the story. No, that stumped me. How did it explode a little bit? Well, you'll find out soon. No, um, don't, oh, no, not soon, now. I'm going to start on uh, radioactivity. Do you know what radioactivity is, boys? It is the decay of a nucleus from a larger energetic state to a lower energetic state like a lesser weight you took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> well yes that's one type of radiation that's nuclear radiation or, or you've got gamma radiation which yeah. is the the electromagnetic wave so in physics radiation is the emission or transmission of energy in the form of waves or particles through space or through a material medium basically any kind of energy moving through stuff that's the broadest definition of wow radiation. really okay infrared radiation is what we're giving out right now so i'm radioactive well, no, I'm giving out radiation. You're, you're not, yeah, you're not radioactive. Okay. You are a little bit radioactive. Yeah, I am also radioactive. That's true. Yeah, everything's a little mm. bit radioactive, more or less. I feel powerful. In fact, people in Cornwall, <laughs> <laughs> people in Cornwall get uh, slightly more radiation than other people. People in Cornwall are more radioactive. No, because is there not a lot of granite in Cornwall? I don't. You're the I'm, one who I told the story. <laughs> That's a weird thing to write. Have you heard there's a lot of granite in Cornwall? I don't have this written. Da- I don't have this written down. No. Um, uh, in places with more granite, there's the rumors more. Rumors might be true. <laughs> Yeah, so if there's more granite, there's more of a particular type of radiation that's in granite. So you're more radiated if you live near a huge gra- granite deposit. radiation. Yes. That's like my granny's called Granny Janet. Granite. Granite. <laughs> <Radioactive. laughs> now I'm going to start calling her granite. <laughs> All right, radioactive granite. Oh, don't touch her. We'd usually categorize radiation by ionizing and non ionizing. Do you know what that <laughs> I'm moving on. Do you know joking. what that means? Uh, it means so ionizing is when you knock an electron out of a um atom. Is that correct? Yeah, so basically ionizing just means you can turn something into an ion, which is either yeah, knocking an electron out or adding an electron in. Yes. Generally ionizing radiation knocks it out. Which is bad for your body. I was going to say, isn't that the dangerous one? That's the dangerous That's one. That's the dangerous one. Yeah, you don't want that. All the other kinds of radiation are just like visible light or infrared radiation. They're not very... They're fine. Yeah, no. they're, they're all right. They're good. It's harmless. It well, feels to me that those shouldn't be harmless. called... You can they... get sunburn. No, harmless. That's from UV light, though, which is well, a little bit ionizing. Well, to me. You're mm. Australian. No, but I'm very white. <laughs> <laughs> white okay. Australians aren't meant to be there, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. This is turning to an existential anyway. history lesson. <laughs> it's going to get worse. You guys know, I'm just going to talk all about radiation and blast through this. Please do. Please I feel like do. A lo- <laughs> oh, no. Blast through this. Oh. That wasn't on. That wasn't oh, on. radiation joke. Usually, we'd colloquially think of radiation as nuclear radiation. Yes. That's what, yeah. Yes. Like the bad radiation. Which is, yeah, so radiation Equals coming from, bad. from a nucleus of an atom. Yeah, so that's a process by which an atomic nucleus emits energy by way of radiation it's really simple and decays into a smaller thing Ye- yes yeah so it's basically random on a single atomic level so you could take a single atom of plutonium or uranium or i think it's carbon 15 and you won't know when that's going to emit a particle yes in fact you could never it could take the length of the universe for it to do it and you would never know when it's going to happen so we use half lives oh yeah I was, about, I was about to ask. So basically what that means... this. Yeah. So it's cool. random on a single atomic level, but if you've got a collection of um, these atoms... Then you then can you, kind of guess. You can, you can use a half-life. So half-lives can range from being seconds, milliseconds, to the entire age of the universe. That's a long time. It's a long time. 
Yeah, it's quite a, <laughs> it's quite a broad scale. It's about fifty five, like a factor of fifty five, fifty five orders of magnitude. That's it's quite that's, a few. That's how long I've been around though. So we, we've been recording this podcast for longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it feels like it. We've had a lot of technical <laughs> problems. You will be about two minutes into this episode, but Literally, we've been recording be. for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're right. Uh, it changes. I know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It changes to something else. In except for in the case of gamma decay. But where does that energy come from then? If it's not from mass. Yeah. No. I mean. I mean. If it doesn't oh. decrease in mass, where does the energy come from? Sorry. So um, you can go down a step in energy. Oh, like electrons, electrons move down into yeah. energy orbitals. Yes. I remember my chemistry GCSE. Hell yeah. I yeah. don't. <laughs> did you so basically do you have those I did, yeah. around the nucleus you have like orbitals which are the the sort yeah. of they're kind of not real in like literally how you're taught them but they are like rings where you're most likely to find electrons yeah i remember drawing the graphs at yeah. School, yeah and so the electron can move down from a high energy state yeah. to a low energy state and the difference in that energy is a gamma radiation or just any kind of radiation so that's oh. how kind of no that's kind of how like fluorescence works so it depends on the amount of energy that you right. that you're losing on how much energy that proton's going to have, whether it's going to be visible light or infrared or mm. ah, gamma radiation. Yes. <laughs> so there are different types of radiation, which, which we've already kind of gone over. Do you guys know any of the types of radiation that we've not mentioned already? Bad. <laughs> no, that's gamma <laughs> Bad radiation. and good. Oh, yes. sorry. <laughs> uh, any other type? Um, <laughs> of, um, I'm, talking, I'm talking purely about the kind of like nuclear ionizing radiation here. Nuclear. Honestly, uh, that doesn't that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just to help you out, here's a clue you don't understand. <laughs> I could just be talking gibberish. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll help you out. I'm You're... talking quantum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you heard of alpha radiation? No. Oh uh, yeah, and there's beta radiation, uh, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, I did alpha, radiation. beta, gamma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and then uh, neutron radiation. So alpha radiation is the piss baby. Yes. of radiation like it can't it can't go through anything can it no it, it, it gets stopped by your skin yeah but you isn't can... it also the worst one if you get it inside you oh god it's awful if you yeah, get it inside you, you can't get back out it just keeps <laughs> bouncing oh, around yeah, it sure. it ionizes everything so if <laughs> you eat some so if you ingest it or get it into a wound it's really really bad for oh, you dear. but you can stop it with a sheet of paper yeah, or it's a light weird. Ja- it's one of those things where you can stop it with a light jacket like protective oh clothing god. for uh, alpha radiation is just any clothing I like <laughs> just, <laughs> just any clothing right you anything just, but you have to keep your mouth shut that's the thing exactly <laughs> which is <laughs> difficult which is difficult <laughs> so basically it's very heavy it's made of two protons and two neutrons it's essentially a helium that's quite heavy atom without any electrons I left that at the gym though <laughs> so <laughs> I'm onto three. Watch out. I'm onto three protons. <laughs> beta radiation A. <laughs> no, it's not beta radiation. Beta radiation is lighter. I'm so, wrong. Yes, beta radiation is Silly. a light, short-range particle, and it's actually an electron. Beta mass only but what one make- proton. <laughs> <laughs> what makes it uh, radioactive if it's not an electron? Is it just an electron on its own? No, it, it, so it isn't. The electron isn't itself radioactive. The electron is the radioactivity. Yes. So the particle so that's emitting electron the electron is, beta, is a beta radiation. No, no, no. It's so beta radiation is this high energy electron being fired from. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's what makes it radiation. Cool. I don't fully understand, but we'll move on. I'm going to be honest. This oh, is, I'm, on, I'm on your level. <laughs> <laughs> this is stuff that gets simplified down, and no, genuinely, yeah. it, it gets simplified down. And it kind of loses all meaning. Like, yeah, my favorite thing about science is that we, if you like, really understand science, you know all of your models but you also accept that they're all probably actually wrong they're Mm. just a good description of what we see they're they don't actually exist in the way that we think they exist absolutely i remember every single year in high school in say biology or chemistry they'd say to us do you remember this thing we taught you last year yeah oh yeah we lied about this (laughs) yeah that was the thing that was the whole meme at school that was like oh yeah that thing we told you last year yeah no that's that's fake that to me is like is the evidence as to why you shouldn't... This is a bit of a tangent, but I'm very passionate about it. Um, I don't think it's a helpful life um, model to base your life purely around what science tells you because everything science tells you turns out to be wrong. In the same way that what we learned at GCSE was actually wrong and you learned something more accurate at A-level, if you keep going up, eventually you get the best scientist in the world. And that scientist will also eventually have a better scientist who will tell that scientist they were wrong. And so we only can go up to what the cutting edge of what we know is. And so if you're basing your whole life around what science tells you, you're basing your life around a a lie that 
kind of is accurate to what we think is going on, but it's still a lie. Yeah, no, we were talking about this off air. Yeah. Which we shouldn't do. No science talk. Okay. Unless it's well, being it recorded. It wasn't science talk, was it? It was it specifically was content, anti-science talk. <laughs> no, anti-science. I agree with you that you shouldn't base your life on science and unless you understand that you don't know everything. Yes. The goal with science mm. can never be to know everything because we'll die <laughs> before we know everything. The human race will be long gone or it'll be evolved into something else that we can't even call human anymore before we know even a fraction of everything. Yes. You should, your goal should be to know more, I think, in just in life as well. A pursuit of knowledge isn't a pursuit to know everything. It's a well, pursuit to... To know more, but also to accept that you probably know nothing as well. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. need to accept it. I think that's just as important, if not more important. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, that's, what I was think, that's what I was saying to you earlier on. <laughs> just, this is, a nice, just, this is a nice tangent. James, just, just, James is just sort like, of smiling is, along. This is nice and wholesome. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing yeah. it back. I was saying this to you earlier on that there was a point in history where we didn't know about radiation or nuclear fission or fusion. And when we discovered that, it opened up an entire mm. new world of mm. energy and mm. weapons. And the world is completely different because of it. Yeah. Entirely. And it was sitting right under our noses the entire time. And I can't wait for the next thing. Mm-hmm. The next big thing. Like, we discovered cells. We discovered atoms. Then we discovered quantum particles. And it does feel like science science, or, or science journalism, a lot of science journalism, would have you know that we know everything. everything. Mm. And actually... That's the biggest lie of all, is, is that. And that, that's a thing that I was stuck in for years. I was stuck in this place of like, well, if science hasn't proved it, it definitely doesn't exist. And actually, that's a very close-minded... Oh, I see that like, so much online. Yeah. With people on, like, like on Twitter and stuff. Exactly. And I know that takes you down the route. It can take you down dangerous routes, for example, like flat earthers, right? Oh, yeah. Who are essentially, <laughs> fundamentally, d- saying the same thing. It's like, well, science doesn't know everything. And actually, we do know that Earth is round, or at least looks round when you go up in a spaceship. And so but they've never been up in the spaceship. But so they've never been up, yeah, exactly. exactly, exactly. But neither of you, you haven't. So to to assert that you know that the Earth is round is also just as stupid because you've never been up in a spaceship. You have no direct <sighs> evidence that the Earth is round. Dun, dun, you could run your own experiment, for example, like watching a ship go over the horizon and watching it dip down, and that kind of suggests to you that the Earth is curved. Um, but I think just b- blindly regurgitating anything that science mm. has said to you is stupid because you don't know it to be true. Sheepish Imagine behavior. if you were living in a dream and everyone around you was actually lying to you and you then said that everything that they'd said was true. Yeah. I'm not saying that's true, but like, I'm, like, I think it's so important to remember only to assert things that you know to be true. I think it takes a certain, a certain amount of faith to believe in a lot of things that science tells you because I don't know that radiation exists. In fact... I myself, That's true. yeah, I myself have never come into contact with anything. I haven't seen too much would, radiation. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of difficult. I've never come into contact with anything that would make me believe that radiation exists. Yes, everything X-rays easily faked, but you've got to take it on faith that it's true because yeah. it's the best model we've got right now, and it's only getting better. Mm. Yes, yes. Should we carry on with let's your go, story? Let's go back yeah. to anyway, yes, story. No, back to the story. <clears throat> Back to beta, beta radiation. Beta radiation. Yeah. yeah. So um, alpha stopped with paper. Beta, you need some aluminium. It's a little bit stronger, a little yeah. bit more. Oh, bit of foil. Need, need yeah, but it goes a little bit, goes a little bit farther. Um, it can travel a few feet in air, and it penetrates you just a little bit. Just the tip. Just, the, just the tip. Oh, just God. The, <laughs> dips in and gets out. No, no. <laughs> no, because, do you know what? A lot of people have been, have been coming back to us and saying that they listen to this while studying <laughs> Or doing their homework. I thought you were going to say listen to this while I was having sex. <laughs> based on the <laughs> sentence you just said. Because that wasn't a tap. Like, you were... Penetrates you just a tip. By the way, a lot of people have been saying they listen to this... Oh, while we're on the topic. <laughs> yeah. My point being that I'd love for someone to be sitting in an exam and being like, beta radiation. Oh, how just much the tip. Does that, how much does that penetrate? Just the, just tip. the tip. Just the tip. No. We're helping. Aluminium foil <laughs> reflects beta radiation. That's what wrap you Wrap it before remember. you tap it. No, stop. Oh, no, wrap it in aluminium foil. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Carry on. Shall we move on to gamma radiation? Please. Next, right? Please, let's do. Please. So they're highly penetrating, which is why you're able to use them. <laughs> stop it. Oh, no. That's not many things. Stop it. <laughs> which is why you're able to use them to look at your bones. <laughs> Through an x-ray, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah x-rays can travel through most of your body but they don't travel through bones so well so that gives you an idea of how penetrating skeletons they are. will win the war Ke- sorry what skeletons will win no they won't we are skeletons so that's not- we're meaty skeletons you're a skeleton james skeletons are win- gonna win the war 
Are you in? Are you? Mm. <laughs> is your skeleton inside of you, or are you inside of it? I'm inside everything that I call me. I'm on the center of it all. Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. Get over yourself, mate. No. <laughs> you look through. You look through your skeleton. Yes, I look through. through I'm Luke Cutforth, and I'm the center of the universe. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> no, <laughs> he said, said he's Luke Cutforth, and he's the center of Luke. Although Cutforth. on that topic <laughs> of me being the center of the universe, <laughs> here we go. We are the. I, I am the center of my universe. You're, you're the, the center, center of, of your universe. Yeah, the observable universe. Yes. So, <laughs> I am the center of the universe. For, to me. Wow. What a soundbite. No, no, to me. To, uh, make sure you keep the to me in there. I'm not editing. <laughs> no, I'm editing. It's stuck up to me. <laughs> where were we? Have you ever walked along? When right. the centre of your universe yes. involves Have you editing. ever walked along and thought about the fact that when you walk, you don't actually move? The universe moves around you. Do you know what? That reminds me of Futurama. Have you seen that episode of Futurama where they've got the faster than light? ship yeah oh no, yeah, no, yeah. No. so the ship can travel faster than yeah. light to get around the fact that you can't move faster than the speed of light it just moves the, moves universe, the universe around it. around it right and the thing is they they were studying this and they kind of came up with a kind of ship that does something similar to that that bends space time around it so that it can move faster than light rather than actually moving faster than right. light itself wow oh my god yeah. but like seriously if you're if you're listening to this and you're watching you're, you're walking somewhere right now and you're listening to it like, just really pay attention to the sensations. When you walk... The ground moves. The ground moves. Like your, a treadmill. Your point of view moves, but the actual, what you call you, stays still. And it's very weird when you notice it. You've never left one point. Yeah. You've been in the, you the are, one single point in your entire life. Yes, you've never left this point. Oh. Oh, no. Things are just happening around Think, you. Yeah, well, you're just changing your point of view of the mm. world. And I don't know how that works, but that feels so real. And maybe I'm just, everyone's just going to think I I'm I feel mental. quite strong that I can, I can move the universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James. How much, you guys, how much you guys lift? I've been lifting, you know, the universe. I told lately. you, I lift two nu- neutri- neutrons and two protons. <laughs> I lift the universe. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> James is that bloke at the gym that comes and puts like two more weights when you're... Did you know that the universe is moving around this weight? <laughs> <laughs> it makes it lighter. <laughs> so, gamma radiation. I don't even know where I was before. Gamma. Uh, you can stop. Do you know what you need to stop? Gamma radiation. Lead. Yes. Um, a few inches oh, of lead. Oh, is it actually lead? Mm-hmm, good few inches. Yeah, it is lead. Yeah. Okay. A few yeah. inches of lead. I was just going to say, it's a, a good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is why um, nuclear fallout, shanter, f- fallout shelters... Fallout shelters. Fallout shelters. Uh, nuclear fallout shelters I are mean, usually lead lined lines. with lead. I didn't know that. That's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then there's neutron radiation, which is radiation of free neutrons. Don't get involved with this. It's very, very dangerous Radiation stuff. of free neutrons. Yes. So you've got um, alpha radiation, which is Triple two protons negative. and two neutrons. Yes. And then neutron radiation is just neutrons. So that's like the electron one, but with a neutron rather than an electron. Yes. A high energy neutron. Extra neutron. I feel like we should probably explain what protons, neutrons, and electrons are. Should we? I don't know. But Actually, don't, okay. yeah, they no, probably should. Okay. Just quickly. So atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Electrons yes. are the tiny little ones that have got almost no mass that spin around and are negatively charged. Protons are the bit in the middle that weigh one. Weigh one? They weigh one. Yep. What do they weigh one of? One. One. One proton. One, one weight. Just one weight. Okay. Yep. One atomic mass unit. Yes. Yeah, so they, they weigh one and they are positive. And then you've got neutrons, which just kind of hang about. They don't really do much. They're neutral and they weigh one. To me, the neutron is like another one of those examples of where science knows absolutely nothing. Because the neutron to me is like, it, it's such a wasteful... Thing. It does nothing. It's just like it's we've measured the weight of the atomic nucleus and gone, okay, well, there's enough charge for for <laughs> one, or there's enough charge for five charge, but then there's like 10 weight. So we'll just have to make something up called the neutron. I know that we observe it. I know that it has mass. I know that it activates a detector. I know all these things. But to me, it just seems so wasteful. And if you're like, if you're looking through the world as like Occam's razor, of like the universe will manifest itself into the mo- into the least complex way. The neutron is so wasteful. It's just so dumb. I love that you're going minimalist on atoms. Yeah, of the neutron. <laughs> what does it do? Yeah, yeah, but there's things smaller than the atoms. So what's your problem? <laughs> Get rid of all of it. Just just one particle. Make that the universe. Minimalist dream. 
Well, the universe is nothing but energy. It's, there are no particles. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Particles don't exist. They're just energy. Oh, uh, don't okay, do that. Luke. I mean, oh, it's true. true. It's true. I mean, I mass know it's is just, true, but I don't like thinking just, about it. Mass is just energy that we call mass. Because it's in one... Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we call mass because it's in one particular it. form. Okay, cool. So, uh, if you get tangled up with radiation, what will happen? Uh, you might get cancer. Got a messy situation. That's both of those are true. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a little more macabre. James, <laughs> like the attitude. Thank you. <laughs> so you get uh, probably radiation sickness. Yes, yeah, it's quite messy. You know? So uh, we generally measure radiation in lots of different ways. I'm going to talk about it using sieverts because it sounds fun. Oh. Sieverts. Yeah. What's the other ones? Because I already heard one at school at some point. Oh, so many. Uh, okay. I don't... I'm sorry. There's, um, radions? Is radions one? I think there's rad. Rad. Or rad. Yeah. Rad is oh, rad. Oh, yeah. I used rad. Um, ga- is it rad gar cool. units? Guy units? Oh, oh yeah. It's um, There's so many. Nope. And to be honest, I don't know how to pronounce... Geiger, ca- Geiger counters. Oh, yeah. That's the one. Geiger meter? Geiger counters yeah, Geiger is what counter, we use. Yeah. So, I thought it was Geiger meter. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm so a Geiger yeah. counter is the instrument. Yeah. Yeah. So I, to be honest, I don't know how to pronounce most of them. I know what they look like written down, but yeah. I never have to well, say. Well, no, I just wanted to. I just wanted to, show, to make sure that anyone who'd learned like Geiger counters, if we're not talking about it in Geigers mm. or whatever it is, then they know what we're talking about, even if we're using a different um, oh. amount. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you about common household objects and how they are. Okay. In terms of Sievert, so a banana, yes, which you know is a little bit radioactive. Oh, yes, is about zero point one micro sieverts. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that low? That's very low. Okay. <laughs> Have you got cancer from a banana, James? Not yet. Then it's low. <laughs> <laughs> well, you is, that, is that the chance? Is there like chance involved? Because you get cancer from a banana? There's no kind of like, ah, this much radiation. You have cancer now. This radiation equals this much cancer. It's, it's, it's like, like probability that you'll no, get cancer. No, yeah, I was thinking the other way. Yeah, the probability, <clears throat> that's what I was thinking. So generally how it works with your DNA. So, so the lower is the less chance you have of yeah. so, something bad happening. Well, the lower it is, the lower the radiation is. The lower yeah. the radiation, the less, the less chance, chance subsequently. Yeah. Cool. So, ultimately what happens is radiation messes up your DNA. Like, completely. How dare, that's quite rude. Just destroys it. And it can't really it can't really fix itself past that point. So you end up getting things like cancer and growth and Jesus. awful things just because radiation. your you DNA just, is gone. You just get, the DNA has <laughs> in it um, information that tells the cell to die. And if the DNA is oh. messed up, then the cell just keeps dividing and dividing an and dividing mm. forever, using up all of your resources and taking over like your lung or your liver or whatever. So yeah, you've got th- that's how you can get like a tumor, and then it gets cancerous when it just decides to start spreading. Spreading everywhere. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the more DNA you kind of destroy, the more chances more that ch- okay. that one of these cells is gonna not yes. get not get killed. <laughs> I was reading this on the government website because they've got a list of there's laws on radiation and how much radiation you can give to a person in a year. <laughs> no, <they're, laughs> it sounds silly. It sounds silly, but obviously, like, you use it medically and people working in nuclear power plant, plants yeah. need to be safe. Yeah. There's this list and I don't know whether they're using microsieverts or milli. So, I could be out by a factor of a thousand. Right. Right now. That's a good job you don't work for the government then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh it's no, I've me- actually given, I've accidentally given someone 1,000 times the legal <laughs> dose. The thing, the thing is, a lot of these seem far too high to me, but the, but uh, basically, they, they seem too high, but the... It's probably true. But what they've used is, is the sign for millisieverts. Right. So the government might be wrong. They might be wrong. Well, you should look this stuff up and then we can report it to the government. Or maybe sell it to the <laughs> Sun newspaper, fund our podcast. Fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch, you're listening. i got a story for you. Got a and scoop. The micro sievert scandal. Why do oh, our employees die? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just run through really quickly just some different dosages so you guys can get an idea for how much each of these are. Mm. I'm going to be using it later on. Okay. Your average UK dose of radiation. So for us three, our average dose between us will probably be about two point seven millisieverts each. That's not very much. Which isn't very much. Doesn't no. sound very much. It's um, it's slightly less than a CT scan of your whole spine, which is ten millisieverts. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, if you get a, so that's why you don't get. So that's if why you get, if you get a CT scan, scan you're four times I was say over you're the average. Four times already. Over your, that's just when your your average dose is just what you yeah. get living your life. Which is why you're only allowed oh. to have a certain number of CT scans and X-rays in uh, like per year. My, my dentist goes crazy with X-rays, so I don't yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that on your medical records there's 
the number that you've had that that year? Sometimes my dentist just messes up an X-ray and is like, "Oh well, oh well, do it again, do another one." That's that's not that big a <laughs> deal because it's, it's just your teeth. But you know, so what they used to do with X-rays like was teeth. they had it's really awful, but it's quite funny. They had they had these X-ray cameras that fired a constant stream of X-rays. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> so they would. This is before they knew it was dangerous. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so they discovered the X. The, uh, there was this. There was this X radiation. That's a cancer. That gun. would. That would. You know, color. F- that would change the color oh. of film. And they decided. They just let's leave just it on. Build, let's just build a camera with it. That's and like use when you're on a film set and they bones. just leave the camera rolling. <laughs> but then yeah, it gives you it cancer. Gives you cancer. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Imagine if leaving the camera rolling on a film set just gave Bloody you cancer. Hell. That'd be awful. The thing Hold is, the plane. Hold the plane. Oh, okay, right. We've all got cancer now. Just think of everyone else feeling a bit wheezy. <laughs> <laughs> just think about something new now. Like this new, uh, a new medical technology now that could be incredibly dangerous, and we only find out in like you know thirty years. Yes, because that's happened so often that's in history. Scary. And then everyone looks back and laughs at us. Like they didn't think MRI scans were dangerous. Idiots. Well, I mean, uh, of course you wouldn't. Like going out in the sun doesn't seem that dangerous, does yeah. it? And it's effectively well, the same thing. I'm ginger, so. Oh, I suppose it. <laughs> it's a death wish for us all. Going to the shops <laughs> might die. Have to weigh up your risk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your annual exposure if you work in a nuclear power plant is seven. Nope, it's not seven. It's twenty millisieverts, which is double a CT scan. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's like that's nearly ten times the average. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're sitting around it all the time, and then one hundred millisieverts is the level at which you're. Changes in blood cells that becomes dangerous. can be readily seen. No, it's when you can readily see changes in blood cells. Oh, that's so it's a little bit okay. dangerous. And that's because blood cells are replicated the most of any of your cells. Do you know what right. the average okay. dose given to somebody who goes to the International Space Station is? So I can tell you Ooh. what the... I don't have that there. I can tell you the dose of a transatlantic flight. Yes. Which is... Wouldn't be, you know, too different. 0.08 for one transatlantic flight. But then, but you have the ionosphere to help you out there. That's true. But you're, you're still slightly less. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that Luke's asking that, for anyone that doesn't know, is because people out in space uh, don't have the protection of the atmosphere. The atmosphere, yeah. So there's a lot more radiation hitting them. In fact, that's one of the, that's one of the big dangers of being in space, getting cancer from space radiation. From space. <laughs> Thanks, space. space. Oh. I mean, if space, wasn't deadly, space. Like, if space wasn't deadly enough, if you don't die out in the vacuum, if you get back, you might die of cancer. Wow. That's sad. Yeah, space does not want you being there. A dose so, of radiation that would kill about half the people receiving it within a month is 5,000 millisieverts. Oh, oh, that's fine then. That's pretty high. Quite a way off. Like, that's I mean, a, that's a lot of x rays. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell my dentist it's all G. <laughs> We're going to x ray each individual tooth. That's, I hope you don't Half die. the people within a month. More people could still die after the month. Sh- sh- oh, yeah, true. You've yeah. got two variables there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Half the people and also one time limit. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, that's not too much. So the initial signs and symptoms are usually quite treatable. Hmm. So it's nausea and vomiting. Because your body... It's quite noticeable. I mean, yeah, Thinks it's been poisoned. Yeah, exactly. Because it basically has. Um, and the amount of time between exposure and when these symptoms start relies entirely on how much radiation you've been hit with. Mm-hmm. So if it's a lot, it's going to happen instantly. Quite quickly. If it's a little bit, it might take a little bit longer. Usually, after the first round of symptoms, there could be a period where you don't have any symptoms at all. You become asymp- asymptomatic. And then you start to die. Oh, after, you, after you've already had the symptoms. Because you've got yeah. a low oh. enough dose. Yeah, so I, I, don't really, I, I don't really know exactly how this happens, but you first feel ill probably from the initial, like, hit of it. Yeah. And then right. as, as it starts to build up in your body and you, your organs start to fail, you get very wor- like so much worse very quickly. So in that middle bit, does your body just adjust to it? So and it's like, okay, this the, is fine. The initial nausea and vomiting would yeah. probably be from just the initial reaction to the radiation. So from right, the okay. lesser okay. lesser part of the radiation. And then because it's messed up your DNA and it could have affected your organs and right. given you burns inside of your body. It, mm. Those take longer to those actually... take longer to actually affect you. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm giving you cancer, for example, cancer takes a while to grow. That kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So if you've had mild exposure, it could take about uh, maybe a few hours to a few weeks before any signs show up quite the range thing <laughs> so other symptoms you should be looking out for uh, are nausea and vomiting because you guys are going to be hit with a lot of radiation soon aren't you so next time i have nausea i'm going to call you up and go 
Sorry, I've got radiation poisoning. <laughs> That's because no, I put americium in your bed, Luke. Oh. <laughs> Why oh, do no. you always do that? It's just fun. It's because you that business. This is why I moved out. We have a load of americium in this house. What? Yeah, most people do. What's it in? It's in... I forgot the word for them. What is are the things that the go... French? Wee, 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 when the there's smoke. smoke. The smoke, smoke, the yeah. smoke, smoke detectors. They meant police. <laughs> we have loads of those in the house. The guns just fire it. <laughs> right, yeah. So I'm, those work by... They have like a, um, a source, and then they have a detector. And then when smoke... When you have smoke... It means that the source doesn't reach the detector, so the thing goes ah, yeah, fire, fuck, exactly, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And that's a that's another GCSE question. So memorize that one. <laughs> it is. That's yeah. where I remember it from. Yeah, same. Yeah, I never got that one. It's because you didn't do GCSEs, James. You lived in Australia. Well, we did other tests. Did you do physics? Yeah. Oh, physics and chemistry. Oh. Yeah. So the other symptoms are basically what you'd imagine: headaches, fevers, dizziness, weakness, hair loss. Bloody vomit in stools, infections, and low blood pressure. Bloody vomit in stools? Bloody vomit and stool. Oh, okay. <laughs> I vomited out of my bum and it's oh, bloody. What, what is that? Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's kind of an overview on radiation sickness. So you guys know what we're going to be talking about just a little bit later on. Yes. I'm going to talk to you guys about chain reactions, which are pretty straightforward. It's what it says on the tin. So it's basically where neutrons are released in fission. Produce. Comes in a tin. Produce. Produce additional fission, fission reactions. Reactions, yes. And then it just builds up. So basically, what you've got is you've got one atom that's surrounded by a load of other, load of other ones, and it's like I'm going to send out a neutron, and that neutron hits another Ooh. atom, which then hits another, and then more and more. Oh and yeah, because they're all sending out more than one neutron at a time. Oh, we like, did learn about this. Yeah, and then you got your control rods that you lower in to stop it. Very good. Well love done. That. Love that stuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so that can either be, um, controlled. Like in a with nuclear control pump. rods. With a control rod. Thank you. And like an inanimate carbon rod. Or <laughs> control uncontrolled. Control rod. Control rod. <laughs> oh, what, sorry? <laughs> an inanimate carbon rod. Yes. Yes. Or uncontrolled, like nuclear weapons. Oh. Yeah. Good. Mm, not fun. No. Yeah, so why don't we get onto the demon core? Please. Now that you guys oh, are well that. versed in radiation. To be fair, so, we haven't even touched on slippery screwdrivers yet. Oh. I mean, it's going to come up later, and oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten about the slippery screwdrivers. <laughs> he always does this. He Don't, teases it. And yeah. then at the end, he's like, remember when I said slippery screwdrivers? <laughs> That's now. So the demon core is a 6.2 kilogram, 3.5 inch sphere. Basically, it's like a big, heavy apple, except it's made of plutonium. That's very heavy. Oh, yeah. It's wow. plutonium. It's it, That's dense as hell. And what's that used for? So is this what they're trying to do fission with? Fusion. So this was this is all back in 1945. So I'm sure you can imagine what it was used for. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So whoa. it was initially manufactured for use in a bomb, and it was supposed to be dropped on August nineteenth, nineteen forty-five. However, oh. Japan surrendered four days beforehand, oh. which I never knew that America was so close to oh, dropping just a first another tip. one. Like, they didn't learn their lesson. After these, do these first two. two. Yeah. not enough. Let's oh, let's go again. Learned. So while it wasn't used for that, when was it going to be dropped? Um, That's just out of interest. Oh, where? Japan. I, ge- is all, I genuinely is it that big? It would have covered all of Japan. I mean, no, but I genuinely don't know where it was going to be dropped. Uh, okay. th- I don't think America wants to release Probably much not, of that. No. Yeah, yeah. So it did kill two people directly, and is linked to the death of about four others. So it was made at five cents, which is this really fun way that physicists use to describe critical mass. So right. critical mass is the point at which that thing is going to cause a chain reaction and just explode. So five cents below critical mass is five percent below critical mass. Right. Yes. Yes. And so it's subcritical. Now it was used in the studies to see how to get something that was subcritical to go supercritical. So basically, how you do that, there's three main ways. You can either compress the metallic core, or add more radio- radioactive material, or use a neutron reflector to send all the neutron radiation back into it. Right. So basically, oh, okay. even though it's below that, if you if you put a reflector on, mm-hmm. all the neutrons that are escaping bounces back actually in. go back in. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So the last one is what scientists were studying, trying to prove that it was close to supercriticality and find out how much neutron reflection was needed. So I'm going to tell you about the first guy. Oh, I didn't mention this. It killed two people. It killed these guys in two separate incidents. This wasn't one thing. This was two separate things completely, oh. completely apart from each was other. Was it the same cause of death? Radiation, yes. Yes. It's not like someone threw it at them. Well, I mean, mean, like, (laughs) did they die in the same way? Was it the same? Radiation sickness, yeah. Okay. Ultimately, yeah. Um, One of them lasted a lot longer than the other, but... um, Okay. Still dead. 
It's not really horrific. stronger. The first person to die at the hands of the, the demon core, as it's called, was, demon core. was Harry Daglian, who was a 24-year-old physicist. On August 21st in 1945, a few days after it was supposed to be dropped, um, and he decided to go into work after hours, which is completely against protocol, and work alone, which again is just unheard of. The security guard at the time decided just to let him in for some unknown reason and sit in the room with him. Oh, ah. I was going to say it was the security guard that died. So the core was on a square of tungsten carbide, which is a neutron reflector. And what Harry was doing was adding more and more bricks of tungsten carbide until it was reflecting all of it and it could reach supercriticality. So they wouldn't explode? Yes, so they would stop before it got there. Yeah, I'm playing a dangerous game there, Harry. <laughs> yes. So Richard, <laughs> Richard didn't have iPhone <laughs> games back in the he's, day. He's risking blowing up a nuclear core. This is what they, this is what they were studying. What? Yeah. It's so in the job description. <laughs> but this was back. Bear in mind, this is back in the 40s. So they knew it was dangerous because they just dropped the bombs, but they didn't know yeah. <laughs> how seriously dangerous it was in terms of long-lasting effects. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they all yeah. knew the dangers of working with it, but they were all kind of lax. They just knew it goes boom, boom. As the as the core has all these neutron reflectors added to it and they have neutrons go in and, and cause it to lose mass, I assume, does it get lighter as energy is... I mean, how- fractionally. The amount of energy that comes out of such a small mass is such that if it was to lose, say, a noticeable amount of mass... Everyone would be dead. Yeah. So, okay. I'm yeah. just trying to work out how what hap- like what the process is of if it's just before critical. I suppose it is critical, just like a, a threshold you cross over after which it explodes. But until you reach the threshold, it mostly stays roughly the same. So essentially, um, when it goes critical, that's the point at, at which it can sustain a chain reaction. Right. So before that point, it's still radioactive, but it's not going to go critical it's just going to stay in right just, irradi- just release yeah radiation okay i yeah. understand thank you no worries so he had it on the square he started building around the square then he put them on top so the neutron counter started showing that he was getting towards the point of it being ridiculously dangerous as in it would go critical if he added another brick so he had one in his hand oh no and he held it over and he looked at the neutron reflector and he was like you know what maybe not maybe not and then the brick slipped. <gasps> oh. Yeah. He was playing chicken with an atomic bomb. Oh. And the brick fell on top. So there was a blue glow and this burst of heat. And he instinctively just hit the thing off. But by that point... Too late. He, Too yeah, late. he was a dead man walking. Oh, no. It took him 25 days to die. Oh. Yeah, and so... Slowest death ever. There are pictures of him in those 25 days. Does he just decay? Most of them are cla- most of them are classified. Although there is this one that I saw, which is a picture of his hand, and it's horrifying. Like, there's... I, I mean, there's this, like, kind of black... bit that It's in black and white. But there's this, this dark patch on his skin, which I assume is where his hand was burned from hitting the... Hitting the, tung- yeah. the tungsten carbide. And his fingers, the skin is just peeling off the end. It looks... Honestly, horrific. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, he was he was inches away from well, a nuclear, a, a tiny, tiny little nuclear blast. But the thing is, he saved a load of lives. He saved one life. Well, no, he said had he not knocked the brick off, it would have gone critical and yeah. blown up. So he did, yeah. But also, he endangered he put, them by deciding to go there. and work alone. <laughs> and he worked on the nutri- nuclear program, which killed loads of people. Yes. So I'm not really sad about this one. He was hit by both the initial neutron burst and then the gamma and beta radiation that followed. Oh dear. Yeah. So he had internal burns. Ah. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't really good for him. But the scientists I wouldn't imagine. Used so. him. Is the security guard alive? I'll get to him. Oh. No, so, two people died, remember? So the scientists... No, two separate incidents. I remember? love that both of you are listening. <laughs> I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. It's not the security guard. The security guard gets mm. out alive. He's a good boy. He has no. kids. No, oh, you did say he saved one life. Maybe he said the security guard. Anyway, no, continue. In the 25 days before his death, the scientists used him to study the effects of radiation on a human person, which is part of the reason that we know as much as we do now about high doses of radiation and how they affect you. The security guard... Robert J. Hemerly was also in the room at the time, as I've said, and he died of leukemia 33 years later. That's not something to be happy about. Don't no, it's say not. it like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was it? Did they, so reckon it, did they reckon it was from the 
heavily linked to the presence of yeah, heavy, his heavy. presence in the room. Thirty three years. Like if he's a security guard, he's at he least did say his one massive twenty nine. Twenty. Okay, so he lived to sixty. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, not ideal, but honestly, he was lucky. And the reason that so was he, was he further away? So safe was it because he was further away and nuclear radiation. Um, it follows the inverse square law. Yes. So do you know mm. what that is? So as it doubles in Very distance, vaguely. it goes four times weaker. Yeah. So, yeah, it just spreads out. So he was standing only maybe a few meters farther away, and he lived 33 years, whereas Harry he was, was up, standing was right, right next right to there. it and, and went. Oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah. So he was hit by an estimated 5.1 sieverts of neutron radiation. That's not too bad. Not too bad, but he... Oh, sorry. 5.1 sieverts. Not millisieverts. Sieverts. Oh, man. That's a lot of sieverts. Yeah. 25 days. 25 days and the, 25 the worst part days. is that because he'd studied this and this was his job he knew I mean imagine how devastating that was yeah, this is the thing about it is it's like it's like you you have the first layer of like this is not that sad in that he was w- designing weapons to kill people and you have the second layer of this is not that sad in that he was fucking around like mm. with a nuclear core like and going, oh, could I put the last one on? Oh, oh, oops, I slipped. Oh, I slipped. I mean, the thing is that we we know how dangerous it is now, and they probably did, but I don't think they had the same idea that that we did. Well, he's a professional though. Like we we're, we're the everyman, and yeah, we we know it's dangerous. He's surely he will know. Maybe okay, maybe not the effects of the body though. The thing is, back then we knew that it was dangerous, but we didn't know the full extent. I would say we not know had... because of him. So, May 21st, 1946. 73 years ago, as of tomorrow, when we're recording. As of tomorrow? As oh, of tomorrow, God. yeah. So, Louis Slotin. Yeah. He was Canadian, um, and he was employed by America to build nuclear bombs. He and seven other scientists were performing more criticality experiments, so bear in mind this was a year after Harry had died. Oh, God. Slotin was actually tired of making US weapons. Some people were calling him the chief armorer of the United States. Right. Because of his work on these, but he didn't like doing it. He wasn't enjoying it at all, and he really just wanted to get back to more peaceful studies. Mm. He wanted to go back to Chicago and study radiobiology, like he used to. <laughs> and he was training his, I say training. He was just showing his successor yeah. the kind of experiments that they that they'd usually do. The experiment involved the use of a beryllium sphere as a neutron reflector, which is basically just two halves of a sphere made of beryllium. And you put them together around the core. They're hollow, though, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're hollow. Yeah. Uh, so you put them around the core, and it basically acts as a reflector, reflector causing yeah. it to go oh, critical. Okay. Yeah. Is that how it actually works inside a nuclear bomb? No, so a n- nuclear bomb, uh, there's different ways. It there's different ways of neutrons. Doing. So nuclear bombs usually use... Um, as far as I'm aware, an explosive um, compression system. Uh, okay. So yeah. they compress it and then it goes yep. critical. Okay. These ones um, work by implosions, essentially. Yes. So by compressing it and then it goes out. Yeah. Um, there are other ones which uh, fire more neutrons, more neutrons yeah. at the... That's how it does it in a nuclear power station, isn't it? Yes, I you think. You have a neutron emitter, I think. Maybe not. I do. You know, I didn't look in. I didn't look into nuclear power stations. I was looking into bombs because way more, more fun. fun. And also, <laughs> the police will be after you now. <laughs> oh dear. Lewis and uh, seven other men were in Sector Seven G training his successor. <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's not getting past me. That's not. Getting, that's a reference. That's isn't the it? Simpsons reference. You're not getting that one past me. I've left three so far. I know you really. Have. I know they're in there, but that oh, one's fuck. not getting past me. That was that was weak, Corey. <laughs> Sector Seven. Should I mention this now? Oh, it's did been... they get to the? Do I have a cut? Have we not? Before? Have you not told them yet? I've not told anyone yet. No, we don't. No, okay, it's not. In, it's not in every episode. So, <laughs> Kari has been putting Simpsons, Simpsons references. references. Some of them are like, he states something as scientific fact, and it's actually not. It's a Simpsons reference. Absolutely. So don't don't always use everything <laughs> we say. Sometimes it's names. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. It's names, places, just yeah, last silly week little references. He said, you, oh, don't say what it is. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, if you... <laughs> Should if we you, get people to tweet us the Simpsons Yeah, if you references? think you know what the Simpsons references are, tweet us, please do. Okay. I can't believe you never told them about this. <laughs> no, we haven't told them yet. That's crazy. Lewis was in Sector 7G. No, he wasn't. He was in Sector 7G. No, he <laughs> wasn't. Tell me where he actually was. He was in Los Alamos with seven others, including his successor. 
So he was just showing them in an ex- 7G. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought he was going to say he's in Los Alamos with seven others. His seven G's. guys. Seven other G's. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so he was showing this experiment to his, his successor. He didn't need to do it. He just decided to do it one day. At this point, because they were so lax, they left their badges in a case a few feet away. So you've got um, radiation badges, which if you're hit with radiation, they tell you basically how much you've been hit with. Oh. Yeah. They weren't wearing any. How much were they hit with? A lot. So so essentially... one of them died. So he was using a beryllium... Mm. He was using the beryllium sphere, as I've said. So usually what they do is they put the core into one of the beryllium Mm. set hemispheres. Yes. And then put the other on top using spacers to stop it from closing. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it closes, it goes critical. You've got a, a, a miniature bomb on your hands. I say miniature, it's, well, it's very be, dangerous, yeah. It's quite small, but it'd be a big explosion. However, Lewis decided that he wasn't going to use the spacers because he'd been working with this so much, he he didn't really he's care. He's a pro, he's a pro. He knew what he was doing. Did he slip? He slipped, he didn't he? He held it open with his screwdriver. Slippery oh, screwdrivers! Oh, slippery screwdriver. Yeah. Can I guess what happens? Does the screwdriver, by any chance, slip? <laughs> the screwdriver slips so <laughs> Richard Feynman uh, a very famous physicist described this as tickling the tail of a sleeping dragon and <laughs> no genuine and he he so wasn't so dramatic he wasn't I wrong love British scientist <laughs> tickling the tail tickling of a the sleeping tail. dragon he in America that's just called being a dick <laughs> <laughs> so fucking around with a nuclear bomb <laughs> the screwdriver slipped yes the brilliant sphere closed yes a flash of blue light and a heat wave hit the men in the room. And similarly to Harry, Lewis hit the top of the sphere off. But it was too late. Of course and he did. He knew. Uh, he was reportedly... He reportedly said, well, that does it. Oh! So... Oh, no. As I said, radiation decreases by Imagine the inverse being- square law. So the other men in the room who were like quite a few feet away were... Mostly fine. None of them died at within. None of them. None of them di- yeah. None of them died for another. Sorry, twenty years. Yeah. Lewis, who was standing right next to it, wasn't so lucky. He was hit by a dose of twenty-one sieverts. <gasps> That's four times the last guy, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. Um, some of the men ran out of the room, which is ridiculous because it's already hit. You. Oh, can't get, <laughs> can't get me. Uh, yeah, they came back because what they had to do was measure how much radiation they'd been hit with. Yeah. You know, mm. just by measuring the distance away from the from the source. But Lewis died after nine days on the thirtieth oh, of May. Wow. Which, if you're listening to this when it comes out, that's this Thursday, seventy three years ago. This Thursday, <gasps> this happened. Uh, well, he died. He was also used to understand the effects of. I, of radiation on the human body it's quite depressing imagine this being one. in that situation just I mean, knowing, oh I've only got days to live now yeah his his sister and his mother came to look after him but he was basically gone like he was burned like he felt this he, he had this sour taste in his mouth yeah and felt the, a burn on his left hand that's the story of the demon core that's that on that but had they had they both not slapped it off would it have gone a full nuclear explosion it would have gone critical that's pretty Super amazing critical. that they both did that so quickly yeah I mean, but they both knew. <laughs> yes. They, well, they both kind of went, well, I'm dead. I may as well make less other people dead. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. Well done. Good well done. good boys. Maybe, well, they'd already made a lot of other people dead, but still. <laughs> Maybe just be careful with it from now on. <laughs> Maybe yeah. don't make nuclear bombs. Well, that's actually what we've learned from it. Yay! So all similar criticality experiments were halted until remote controlled assembly devices were more fully developed and actually oh, reliable. Thank God. Yeah, so you won't actually see anyone sitting in a room with a uh, with a ball of plutonium and a screwdriver just poking it to see just what what, what happens. Oh. Because of the incident, safety regulations for the project were scrutinised and revised, and then a special committee was established to review any similar experiments and then find appropriate safety measures. The thing about that though is that there already were security measures, and these guys just decided to ignore them. But they were lax on them. Were they? As okay. in, they they weren't really enforced. It's like. Yeah, but at least gonna... the first guy was just in after after dark. He just went in. I guess the second guy, it only happened a year after, so they were like, oh, a guy died once when it mm. <laughs> because of this thing, so just put a spacer in it and it'll be fine. I mean, they were he was kind of in charge, you know? So he was oh, like, yeah, this really? is fine. I know what I'm doing. Mm. It's a bit dangerous, but I've got this. I've done it so many times before. 
and Silly it just boy. went wrong. Yeah. To be fair, quite an awful story, but it has helped us in terms of nuclear power, smoke detectors. Right. Uh, even in medicines, you yeah, know, we use radiation for that. Well, I mean, I think everything you ever discover in science, it, it gives it all it does is give you power, and it's about what we do with that. And we tend to do bad things with it before we do good things with it. That's, so that's not true. We fired animals into space very quickly. That's a very bad thing. That's a very, very good thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, thanks for listening. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, and why not leave a nice wee review? You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can find me at NotCory everywhere. You can find me at Jamkin everywhere. You can find me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Yay. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>